Hi guys and welcome. Coffee, that's why we're here. That's specifically why we're here today. Um, a commenter on one of my Gaja videos um, mentioned that he was having problems with getting a good extraction from his Gaja Classic. Uh, this video is about that and it's going to go through the control methods to, to get a good routine setup and to achieve a good extraction but it's not going to be specific to just the Gadget Classic this will apply to any espresso machine from your very basic cheap thermoblock machines up to your entry-level single boiler machines like the Gadget, the Branchilio Silver and right the way through up to your commercial grade multi group head all singing all dancing machine the principles remain the same for all of them and it's all about control and what you can control what you can't and how to make adjustments to get good results um, pouring espresso by hand is a bit of a dance in that for it to look good and to get a good result at the end of it you need to put a certain amount of effort in prior to that unlike a cup of instant where you just throw a spoonful of Nescafe granules into a mug and pour hot water over it it's far far more complicated but the end result is far far more satisfying because as you know if you're watching this you obviously love coffee and um, a good coffee is something else entirely and it's it's worthwhile so for disaffected waste mangled that one apologies disaffected wastrel is the commenter in question hopefully you will find this useful and hopefully anybody else watching this will also find this useful especially if you're new to espresso and just sort of finding your feet and working through it uh, because we were all there once it's, it's that simple you know and uh, most of us kind of go through the long route and learn the hard way about what makes a good espresso shot and my very first experience with espresso was a cheap thermoblock machine um, that I bought years and years and years ago and um, used it a few times and ended up thinking I, I don't really see the point I might as well go back to my cafetiere because it tastes awful and it tasted awful because I just didn't understand the principles of the machine how to use it and how to get the best from it. it wasn't anything to do with the fact that it was a cheap machine it was just the fact that I wasn't using it properly and like anything that has several elements to achieve an end result you need to look at those elements control what you can and adjust what you can't as you go but you need to maximize the control group and minimize the adjust group so that you are left with less to adjust when you do have a problem and you will need coffee beans I'm going to use some uh, just essentially to make the point that it doesn't have to be freshly roasted coffee beans I'm going to use these cheap supermarket beans I buy these to use to season machines after cleaning uh, espresso machines need to be cleaned because coffee is a foodstuff. Coffee oils and residue will stick to things and it will turn sour after so long, which is why you have to clean things because like any foodstuff, it goes off. So espresso machines, you can buy a detergent called Puli Caf or Cafisa uh, or something like that and that will actually break down and wash away your stale coffee residue, which will make your coffee taste sour and unpleasant and when you do that you need to season your machine again the same is true with a mocha pot for example and you have to brew some coffee and then discard that to season the machine because that gets rid of the detergent any leftover detergent and any sort of taste uh, affects uh, that it might have so I buy cheap, me uh, cheap beans for seasoning but these are also great for practicing your latte art because while they're typically over roasted and not particularly pleasant and have lost a lot of their flavour because they're generally old when you use steamed milk the sweetness of the milk offsets the bean and they work very well for milk based drinks so you know they're great for that but I'm going to use these to demonstrate an espresso pour on the gazier just to show the kind of results that you can achieve 
with a little bit of careful preparation. So you'll need coffee beans, you'll need a grinder, a burr grinder, avoid blade grinders like the plague. If you have a blade grinder, um, push it into the darkest corner of your kitchen and, and pretend it's not there. There are only two places a blade grinder belongs. One is in the bin and the other one is in the corner of the kitchen where you chop the nuts up for your cakes and things because that's, that's all they're useful for. You need a burr grinder for coffee because burrs will give you consistency. A blade grinder will not. So you can use something like this, Harry o Slim or any hand crank grinder. You can adjust the burr, turn them in, turn them out, bring them closer off close together further apart. Throw your beans in in the morning and it's a great two minute workout. You can stand there and grind your morning coffee. The other alternative is an electric burr grinder like this one. You can get these for about £30 so they're not particularly expensive and they use two burrs. One will be fixed, one will spin on a motor and they crush the beans between them and there are also things like this, the Mazza Jolly, which you'll see in cafes, um, espresso shops and, uh, and such like throughout the world. These are great because they are big, heavy, chunky, solidly made th uh, things designed for lots and lots of regular daily use. And they have an infinite uh, micrometer adjustment system uh, by by which means you can you can make tiny tiny little adjustments up and down and that's one of the areas that these fall down on because out of the box in my experience these never ever grind fine enough for espresso so you will need to make some adjustments and the good news is it's easy enough to do but it will involve disassembly. You effectively need to take away the casing and you can either remove the stop that works the gears and readjust it so that when you turn it the gears will come closer together on its finest setting and you need to get them as close as you possibly can without touching reset everything the lock back into place and put it all back together and then that will give you the adjustability uh, to get that fine grind that you need if you cannot physically adjust the burrs to be closer together you need to use um, a shim to fit underneath your fixed burr ideally and for a shim you can use something like a milk carton like this because it's nice thin plastic it's food safe obviously your milk arrives in this stuff and fit that under your blade under one of the blades and that will bring it closer to the other one and you can stack the shims if you need more than one for example the other downside as mentioned is that these are stepped and you'll notice with each turn of that it clicks and locks into place and it has a spring detent system and it clicks and locks into place on each of these dots which is great for knowing where you were and where you're going but not so good because sometimes your perfect grind might be between one or the other and you can't just leave it between one or the other like that because as soon as a bean goes through and forces those blades it will click to the wider setting automatically. There are ways around that. <coughs> what you can do if your setting, your ideal setting is between one or the other is either grind coarser and tamp more heavily or grind finer and tamp more lightly. Which brings us to your tamper. Buy yourself a decent tamper. Avoid the plastic ones that come with the machines. Get yourself something like one of these. A good hefty chunk of milled stainless steel with a nice dead flat surface like that. It's got some weight and heft to it. There's no way this is going to flex under any circumstances. They're not the cheapest things in the world to buy, but the way to look at it is that in normal use for tamping coffee, you will never ever wear out a stainless steel coffee tamper. It's physically impossible. It doesn't matter how abrasive your coffee is, you are never going to wear out a stainless steel toffee, uh, coffee tamper. Um, unless you start tamping road gravel or using it as a hammer or something similar, then that will outlast you, your children and your grandchildren and onwards. So 20 or 30 pound on a good sort of cheap entry level solid tamper 
is money well spent as far as I'm concerned. You don't have to go silly and buy one with a specially selected oak handle which has been waxed by natives of some Bahamian island or something silly because when all said and done the important bit is here at the bottom. So the way to hold it, the best way I've found personally for me and you know this, this may be different for other people, I've seen some people who tamp like this, I've seen some people who hold it like a doorknob and just tamp like that and ultimately you find what works for you. For me I find, and it's, it's become muscle memory now, I pick, up, I pick up my tamper and instinctively it just drops into that position. So you hold it like so with the ball in the palm of your hand, these fingers wrapped around it and then the thumb and forefinger on opposite sides like so. This allows me to control the level of the tamp as well and as I'm pressing down and the tip of my thumb and forefinger meet the, the edge of the basket, I can tell immediately if I go like that my, my thumb hits there and I know I'm not level with the tamp. If my finger hits, I know I'm not level. And again, it's practice, but once, as I'm pressing down and I contact on both sides with thumb and forefinger, I know that tamp is level or as level as I'm able to get it there and then. And I, can, I know that that's a good tamp. I know that I've hit the point that I need to be at. For pressure, I find that keeping your arm at 90 degrees like so, allows you to apply so much force but once that puck becomes solid you physically cannot force it more unless you have it lower down and you put your body weight behind it and press down like so and that's obviously what you don't want to be doing so if you practice your routine and get into the habit of tamping a specific way that suits you and with your arm bent like so you know that that tamp will be consistent every time. So by doing this, you've already controlled the beans that you're buying because you've got a bag full of beans and they're consistent right the way through or as consistent as cooked food can be. You've controlled the tamp because you know that every single time you tamp, that you're applying the exact same amount of pressure or as near as damn it. The only thing that you then need to adjust is the grind either coarser or finer to fine tune your extraction. The other thing I did neglect to mention of course is consistency with the weight as well. Um, ideally when you're starting out it's a good idea to get yourself some of these little jewelers type scales. Um, they are plentiful and cheap on eBay and all over the place and they will allow you to weigh a very consistent amount of beans. Now you can either use them every single time that you pour your coffee after grinding or what you can do is put your port filter handle on your scale, tear it out to zero, fill your basket with coffee, level it off like so, so that's completely level, weigh it again and then you know what weight that coffee is. You don't actually have to weigh it if you're using that method because if you do that method every single time you are going to be within a gram of the amount of coffee every single time because that basket will only physically hold so much. So that's another way to do it. You can either weigh it or you can just fill the basket and level off the top every single time. Either way as long as, it, as, long as that's consistent. So you've got your beans, your weight and your tamp are all consistent. You don't need to adjust any of those unless, as mentioned, you are in between two clicks on your grinder and you might want to ease back a little bit on your tamp with the finer grind. Um, what, me, what this means is you've now got your port filter um, handle with your basket. It's got a nicely compressed flat even puck of coffee in the middle and what's left now is to lock it into the machine and pull a shot. Now when the shot pours, I'll just explain briefly what you should be looking for before I show you the demonstration on the Gazia to show you that you can get a really really nice shot and initially for the first three to five seconds after your port filter handle is locked in and you press the start button you shouldn't see 
anything at all coming out of here because at that point the water is forcing its way under pressure through that coffee puck before it gets through the basket out of the holes at the bottom of the basket and starts pouring down and into the pouring spouts at the bottom here. After about five seconds you should see an initial sort of glug as it sort of spills over the edges and then it should settle down quickly into a steady stream of dark thick looking liquid. That, as that progresses through the next 25 seconds or so you should see a colour change that's steady and consistent from a dark brown through shades of caramel to a much much lighter shade which is called blonding. That's the point where you typically want to stop your extraction because at that point you don't want to be extracting further because that's getting the more bitter notes from your coffee and that's what you want to avoid. This needs to be happening, you need to be extracting between 50 and 60 millilitres for a double espresso shot um, and that's typically 16 to 18 grams of coffee. Um, on a full basket for a double a double basket. So you need 50 to 60 millilitres, which is one to two ounces for our non-UK friends. Uh, within 30 seconds, give or take a couple of seconds. You don't have to be uber precise, but you know, give or take a couple of seconds. If you're getting 60 millilitres in 45 seconds, then that's the, the grind is too fine and that's very over extracted, it will be very bitter. If you're getting 60 millilitres in 20 seconds, it's pouring too quickly and your grind is too coarse. So you need to make that grind finer. Um, this is obviously bearing in mind that all of your other items are controlled. All your other variables are controlled. So once you've got to that stage, it's simply a case of controlling the grind. And with your machine heated up, your portafilter handle heated up, and a well compressed puck in there, you should be able to hit near enough that perfect shot every single time. You will need to make very fine adjustments day to day on your grind as the beans age. And this is the same with fresh beans. If you get fresh beans roasted on a Saturday and your first cup on a Monday, you dial it in and you're getting perfect shots all day. Tuesday might be about the same. Wednesday it might extract a little bit too quickly so you might need to make that just a little bit finer and so on and so forth. You might, you will need to make finite adjustments but you will only ever need to make tiny, tiny adjustments to your grind throughout the course of your bag of chosen coffee beans. Uh, you will never ever need to make wide adjustments provided you've controlled the weight or quantity, the bean and the tamp. Once you've got those to a control standard, the only um, error could that can possibly be is the grind. So with that said, because this uh, explanation took a little longer than I expected, what I'm going to do now is cut to a video I took of me running through this procedure with the gadget, weighing out the beans, grinding it, tamping it, and then pulling a shot on the gadget, which used to sit here until I finished off my wega. Uh, so I've now moved my Mazza over here and the gadget over into a corner, which uh, may be going to a new home soon. Um, because you only need one spare espresso machine after all. So um, I'm now going to cut to this clip to show you the procedure and show you the kind of results that you can actually achieve, even from a, a cheap espresso machine.
So that's a shot with supermarket beans, which are quite literally the cheapest supermarket beans. I tend to buy a bag of these when I want to um, season a machine after cleaning because it's not such a problem and also these these are fine for milk based drinks because the flavour is less important because it's tempered by the milk but as you can see that's been sitting a good couple of minutes now while I've just been cleaning up the porta filter um, and it's got an acceptable crema on there as you can see Not bad flavour, slightly bitter, over extracted a little bit, but not bad. Especially for old, out of date, over roasted, heavily oiled beans. Cheers. So there we go. Uh, hopefully that's useful. And I know it's quite a lot to take in all at once, but hopefully with a little bit of practice, you'll find that the control elements become muscle memory. You get used to them very, very quickly. And within a week of, of pulling espresso shots, you'll have developed your own routine and your own comfortable pattern. Hopefully you've found this very useful and, uh, and it's led to a more enjoyable shot of coffee from your machine for you. Thank you to Disaffected Wastrel for the question and um, for the opportunity to actually uh, make this video because I, I, I love to interact with uh, commenters with people on my channel I always try to reply to all comments I, I like to um, to discuss and exchange ideas I like to learn things myself as as we should all do I believe so thank you for the question because it's uh, it's it's very interesting one and it's it's something that as I say, we were all new to this at some point, and I remember it took me a long, long time to get to the point where I understood all of the principles that went into pulling a good shot. So I hope you enjoyed it. Apologies if it's a little long, but um, please feel free to throw in comments, questions, etc. And I will thank you for that, and I will see you in the next video.